I, I particularly liked in the book, the work that you've put out, I mean, even I've got the print copy of your ARC report here that everyone can read, it's linked down in the description, how you lay out these bomb defusal techniques for the common arguments leveled by advocates of reproductive technologies to draw false equivalencies between something like surrogacy and adoption. Because again, you're an adoptive mother, you've given your case in your own, your own work, but the difference between, as you've laid out, adoption and surrogacy is that surrogacy is depriving a child of a parent and it's deliberately inflicting that identity crisis and that biological bereavement on them, whereas adoption is ameliorating a crisis scenario from a child who would otherwise not have parents. That distinction gives us uh, uh, ammunition against the kind of people that want to trip us up by our own standards. And so I do want to come to the surrogacy question because it's been a debate that's been ignited recently with Guy Benson's announcement that the child he commissioned some woman to have on behalf of him and his husband had given birth. Shortly after that, Shane Dawson, a questionable character, I'll link in the description an article from EW Magazine that compiles some of his questionable comments regarding the sexualization of children throughout his life. Well, he's just had a baby via surrogate after destroying 12 of the other IVF candidates. It's an issue that really divided the liberals and the Christians and the reactionaries and I would say true conservatives, particularly among the American anti-woke movement, the kinds that would argue for the inviolability of life, Imago Dei, natural law, versus the people who think that technology is to facilitate the freedom of the will and the fulfillment of adult desires, and that that's a good thing. Richard Hanania types, for example. Uh, what's your stance on that? What have you made of that recent debate, and what are the dangers of big fertility in the surrogacy industry? Well, I think that the contrast with adoption is critical. Um, and unfortunately, this does trip a lot of people up well, first of all, let's get adoption right. Um, adoption is a just society's response to children who have lost their parents. It is the recognition that children have suffered a primal wound, a significant loss, and it is society's attempt to mend that wound. That is what adoption is. And I will tell you, as an adoptive mom, adoption is suboptimal for the child. Even though adoptive parents are on average, wealthier, better educated, and statistically even spend more time with their kids. They are the exception when it comes to the unrelated adult. That adoptive parents statistically spend more time with their kids than even the average biological parent. Adoptees still do not fare as well because you cannot destroy and deconstruct and detach a child from their mother or father and expect them to just bounce back and be fine. Children are not magnets that you can separate and instantly reattach to whatever adult shows them love and care. Like there actually is a critical bond, especially that takes place in utero between mother and child. And on that foundation, children will build all their future relationships of trust and attachment. And so what we do in adoption is we recognize that the child has lost something that cannot be replaced. And I will tell you and have told many others, I cannot fully compensate for everything that my son has lost but his father and I will do everything that we can to graft him into our family as if he had been born to us and seek to mend his wound. So adoption is a just society's response to children who have lost their parents. Reproductive technologies in general and surrogacy specifically is manufacturing, usually through commercial processes, that very loss. Now, here's the big difference. Um, well, there's several differences that we go through between reproductive technologies and surrogacy. Why I'm sorry, adoption and surrogacy, why adoption is a child-centric institution, why adoption, when it's properly understood, does support children's rights, but surrogacy violates children's rights. So let's just look at a few of those reasons. Number one, in adoption, the child is the client. If adoption is done right, every child that needs parents will find one, but not every adult who wants a kid is going to get one. The goal is to serve the child. Now, in big fertility, the goal is to serve the adults. The adults are the client. The goal is to get them a baby, regardless of the cost, to the child or any other children. So Shane Dawson, right? This child had to lose a relationship with their genetic mother, a relationship with their birth mother, and 10 other kids had to die so that he could get the custom order child that he wanted, right? And so the, so the goal is to serve Shane Dawson. It is not to serve the children. That is number the number one big distinction. Number two, in adoption, adults do hard things on behalf of children. So my husband and I, and a lot of your listeners and followers who have adopted, you understand that it's not easy to adopt. 
because it should never be easy to attach an unrelated child to an adult because of all of the risks that unrelated adults pose to children. So adoptive parents like your listeners, adoptive parents like my husband and I, we went through months of screening and vetting and background checks, home studies, references, training, post-placement reports. We had people supervising us, evaluating our own children, looking at our finances, looking at our physical health. And there was no guarantee that we were going to have a child. The goal was for us to do hard things. We had to do hard things to prove that he would be safe and loved in our home. In surrogacy, the child does hard things for the adults. If Shane Dawson had been subjected to those kinds of background checks and screenings and references, I think there's a good chance that nobody would have given him a baby. Because when you say that you get turned on to the pictures of newborn children, when you say that you want to, that you are sexually aroused by prepubescent children, that tends to be a red flag for social workers. And they'll say, I don't think we're going to place a kid with you. Right. And so when you, what you have here is Shane Dawson's children, right? Cause he and his partner each had a custom order child that was genetically related to them, which is just another ding, 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 something's going on here, right? Why did they want a genetic connection with the baby? Well, because they recognize that there's something special about having a biological relationship with your offspring, right? So when it's important to the parents, biology matters, but it doesn't matter enough to cut the child off from their biological parent to make it possible. I mean, it's such an adult centric, adult obsessed industry, right? So in adoption, the adults do hard things for kids. In surrogacy, the kids do hard things for adults. And here is another really stark factor. Adopted children do not fare as well as children raised by their biological married mother and father, but they do better than kids created through big fertility. Why is that? Why is it? And this, we, the only study that we have that examines outcomes between adoptees and children created through third-party reproduction is comparing adopted children who are raised by neither biological parent and donor-conceived children, sperm donor kids who are always raised by their biological mother, and then often um, you know, a social father or a same-sex parent or a single mother. Why is it that adoptees fare better even though they've lost all of it? And the answer is because they're not being raised by the adults who inflicted the wound. They're being raised by adults who are seeking to mend the wound, right? So both of these kids have a wound, the surrogate born child, the donor conceived child, the one that's been cut off from their genetic mother or father or birth mother, they have a wound. And adoptees, they have a wound. Why is it the adoptees do better? It's because when the adoptees voice their loss to their parents, their parents say, I'm so sorry. That must be so hard. You know, maybe we can write your birth mother um, another letter this Christmas and just send her an updated photo. What do these parents say? You should just be grateful to be alive. Do you know how much we paid to bring you into this world? And yeah, honey, you don't need a dad. Love makes a family. You should be grateful that you have two moms. I mean, in one situation, because the adults are not responsible for the wound, you can actually enter into your child's grief you can shepherd them through their loss. But when you are raising the child and you are the one that decided that their other parents should be gone, absent, missing, or paid to stay out of their life forever, you cannot suffer with your child. You cannot enter into their loss and they are going to have to figure it out alone. And so there's a huge, much greater psychological burden on the big fertility kids than the adopted kids. So anyway, as you can see, these two things are not the same. And it's a great aid to the big fertility people to frame it as just another form of adoption or just another neutral way of creating a family. It is not. It is always the insistent that children lose their right to life, their right to their mother and father, or their right to their birth mother so adults can have what they want. Your framing there genuinely made me go quite cold. Uh, <laughs> I, I think one of the reasons why as well um, Stefan Molyneux has been doing stuff on this for, for years, so he's he's very much on your wavelength. One of the reasons why kids have worse outcomes if they are with one of their biological parents who voluntarily deprive them of another child, uh, I think is the same reason why quite a lot of children of divorced parents have worse marriages, even if they're 
divorced parents then remarry, uh, which is something that you put in your book, and that is because it's a lack of credibility and belief in the family model and in what their parents are setting out for them, versus the parents like yourself who have come into a child's life and rescued them from adverse circumstances, whereas they wouldn't have otherwise had a parent. To not have that credibility to deprive them of that gendered model of how to expect how to interact with the opposite sex, it really does introduce instability in a child's life. And so it's it's a moral crime to, to do so. As well, the, the, the vetting process that you said about, one of the scariest examples in your Them Before Us book was there was, an, I, I, I believe it was an Israeli paedophile who'd commissioned a child and then because of the laws, they couldn't take the child out of the household. You know, it's not like you've got right. the vetting processes there you would in the adoption industry to prevent a child from falling into those hands. So, yeah, the, the idea that children should be grateful just to be alive, just to satisfy their parents' desires in that way, without any safeguards against them being put in compromising situations like that, and to permanently destabilize them from having their own families, even if family seems to be so important to their parent that they defied biology and nature to have them, yeah, it just unsettles me. I don't know. I don't know what to say beyond that. That you, you really know how well, to get the emotions. Well, your, your response is the correct response. You have the correct response. We are buying and selling children. We are manufacturing orphans. We are creating a marketplace in human beings, and that is the only proper response: is to be dumbstruck. Because, like in this country, we fought a civil war to end the practice of buying and selling humans. And we're bringing it back in the name of progress. And unfortunately, even a lot of conservatives and Christians are celebrating it. To watch the full video, please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com.